What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your September 14th daily creative reading. We're going to hop, right, hop, skip, and jump right on in. <laughs> it's just the vibe I'm bringing today. So, oh, and I'm hitting the microphone stand at the same time. Aren't your ears so lucky? Oh, so good. Anyway, let's dive in here. <sighs> okay. That and this. That works for me. Thank you so much, spirits. Okay, so with love. Whoa, there's a little glare on there. And then this one, which is you are magic. I would have to agree. Okay. <clears throat> pump up. The, so dearest you, <laughs> pump up the music, bang the drums, get on up and start that hustle toward your goal and dreams, goals and dreams. There are times to be still, but this is not one of them. Now is the time to make that first move. Say yes to life. Pick up the phone. Make that decision and take that one step towards the gods or us. Expect a cascade of changes, good news, and opportunities to show up as if by magic. Well, we know it's really spirit in all of us moving things around for your benefit. The point is that we are saying go for it. Take positive action toward your dreams. Even if the outcome isn't an exact fit for your agenda, it will all be orchestrated by spirit and arrive in divine appropriate timing. Don't you just love how it all works? We love you so, so much. This really does feel like the hero's journey of the emperor. <laughs> like it's, I don't even know. It, it feels a lot like that, you know? Spirit, what message do you have for my daily creatives, please, for September 14th? Okay. Interesting. Wow. King of Cups, Page of Cups in the world. <laughs> That's, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my giggle. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's just big energy. It's quite, uh, quite substantial. This is, this is part of the call, but this is a really, like, it's like, it's almost like I'm hearing a wake-up call. Like, it's like you, I'm thinking, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever, it's almost like you see something, you want to do it, and it's just like immediately it ages you into, not not age in the way that like um, bodies aging, this is like it ages you into what it is that you want, like it's just like you you grow up into that thing right away, like there's no journey to get there, like you're just, you're ready right away. Um, and it's, I, I'm feeling like there's a, d a deep knowing about this. There's a deep knowing. This is also empathetic leadership that it, there's like a depth of empathy for others. Um, and it's almost like this strikes me as being connected to, um, something a little bit bigger than you, but this is also like a sincere enthusiasm, right? This is sincere enthusiasm. This is also love. Like these are cards of love. I'm not going to be like, no, no, it, they are, um, <clears throat> relative to the hero's journey spread though it's almost like it's like you you see the cycle <laughs> you recognize the lessons of it and you you're done with it so it's almost like the call is like the new steps you're taking because we saw the ten of wands come out twice so far this week so it's like you're there's steps that you're taking there's certain steps there it is again but the, with the nine of pentacles my how you've grown <laughs> there's something about that energy and this could be a release that you're doing or have done through the Pisces full moon or uh, the other possibility is that it's with this retrograde energy, 333 on the time. Okay, and so we also have the five of cups. Interesting. That's part of the call, right? The call and the refusal. It's almost like you're, this is like part of it. It's like leaving behind situations and not leaving behind. How do I word this? Choosing them differently, right? You see the five of cups for what it was. You see the lessons from it. You say, yes, absolutely. But there's an ace here that you're taking with you. And this is almost like a just for you thing, right? This is like a just for you lesson. Um. I feel like there's another cup that's meeting you on the path and it might surprise you. Another cup could be in the form of, you know, um, connections in terms of relationships. Obviously, we're talking about this and it looks quite like that. But this is also the energy of um, this could be the energy of friendship. This could be the energy of uh, just connections that that stir some kind of recognition in the heart center. The tower, I think, is the recognition of importance. Like, why is this important to me? What is important about it? I'm going to put these with this card here. I'm getting a few. Oh, my goodness. It's like you're recognizing what's important about it. 
and you're kind of it's like there's there's an allowing where you might have not like you may not have allowed yourself to just want stuff before yeah like it's like caught up in your head the ace of cups is like hello i'm right here right like you're the five of cups has that ace in this in this card right but it's like not it's like you're holding it just for yourself and i feel like this is a way that you're maybe offering it uh, without as much worry or overthinking and this if it's not a relationship this can just be a way that you're putting your best foot forward but you're you're leading with your heart on your sleeve and that's the difference that's the fundamental difference right ten of pentacles it's interesting this is a completion card as well right technically it's an abundance card but this is part of the refusal and i almost feel like it's a bit of a fear of a ten of pentacles um and it's like what would happen if the best thing that you well i want to say the best thing that would have ever happened to you but that's really it's ever changing so what i'm trying to say here though if what if an amazing thing showed up at your doorstep and it was that it's like it scared you so much because there's like a building to it there's a building to it i don't know i so um uh, Christina on Sassy Scorpion Tarot talked about this with her Libra reading and it's been like stuck in my brain the past couple of days. Um, it just the idea that like, you know, the choices that we make and the ways that um, we can feel like this is, a, this is a lot, right? The Ten of Pentacles is a lot. It can be a lot when, um, when you're not really sure. And you're not really sure, not because it's not important, because the Ten of Pentacles is the Ten of Pentacles. It's really important to you, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't show up in this energy for no, for nothing. Um, and I feel a bit like the vibe here is really about seeing this. And I think this is part of the refusal only because there's something to be said for the cycle that was closing out about this Five of Cups and disappointment, Right disappointment makes it really challenging for you to see the 10 for what it is i think at least this is what reflection and journaling have been showing me <laughs> it's hard for you to see what the 10 is because there it's almost like this cycle is completing and then there's a certain clarity but this is showing up as a part of the the refusal here is like it's almost like storying the refusals that you used to experience or the ways that you did that. Um, and we also are 10 of pentacles change and shift and they get redefined and they, they, there's so many different things that happen with that. And it's, it's easy to feel like that 10 is, is intimidating because it feels fixed. Right. Um, but what if, what if instead of fixed, it was consistent, right? We think of fixed signs. This is something else that I got from, um, that channel from Sassy Scorpion Tarot is like fixed signs are consistent. There's the, like stubbornness. Yes. But like I'm an Aquarius and I also have an, a stellium in, well, stellium in the 11th house. I'm like, I will tell you there's, I, I'm stubborn to an extent. Yes. But there's also, there's a consistency there, right? There's a consistency. Um, and that I also like consistency too, but it's like, what if instead of fixed, this was just consistency because fixed can seem like the 10 of pentacles can seem really intimidating in that case. Cause then you're like, well, that's never going to is, what does that mean for change? Like there's so much changing that someone has to do. There's all these different things. And, but then when you take that out of the equation and you change that, you shift the energy of that from fixed to consistent the change doesn't become so scary, right? The change doesn't become something that's terrifying in that structure and construct, right? You realize that the Ten of Pentacles is a building energy and building it. Part of that includes change. Part of that includes all of those different things. Um, so, but I feel like there's this, it was like a resistance. Like you had your eye on the Ten of Pentacles, but then there might've been a way that you were inadvertently pushing it away and refusing it. And I feel like it's not an outright refusal in this energy, but it's just showing up as like this like realization of legacy, realization of what that important, what that, what the importance of that is. Temperance. Seven of Cups. King of Swords. 
So I'm going to do this here because there's so many cards so far. Um, the thing that could become a tower that if it goes unchecked is this temperance card in, in that it's like an imbalance, right? It's like if you, if you, well, it's, it's an imbalance in the way it's showing up here. It's a card of balance. And I think that if you focus so heavily on balance and staying balanced at all costs, there's going to be, it's almost like that becomes like a five of swords, like a win at all costs card, right? Because then it comes down to, um, there are going to be times in life where things are imbalanced, right? It, it's just kind of how it goes. That's the ebb and the flow, peaks and the valleys. That's baked right into nature, right? Seasons to things. There's going to be times where it feels, um, you know, there's there's differences like that, but it doesn't mean that that's how it's going to be the whole time. And there's something to be said for that. Um, Cause I feel like this, it's like this 10 of pentacles. I almost see it as like floating around the whole reading. Like it's an orbit and, and it's like, there's a gravitational pull and the, the protagonist here is maybe that you, it's like maybe not knowing for a while because it could have protected you in some capacity, but I feel like the balance here, you can prioritize balance. Yes. But if you make it the be all and end all that becomes an imbalance, right? And there's also something to be said for patience too. Um, there's something to be said for patience and that's part of temperance. Um, and I, I feel a, it's not just about the patience piece, but I feel as though it's like making sure that you have enough energy for the long haul of whatever, because this, this is, it strikes me as long haul energy. This could be a project that you're working on and you're super excited about it, but you know that it's going to take a couple of years. This could be a degree and you know, it's going to take a while for you to get there. You know that right? But it's like tempering that so that it doesn't become overwhelming. And if you focus so much on that balance, there's going to be imbalances when you're in when you're investing in specific pentacles of the, these 10, right? And I feel like this seven of cups, this tells me about the protagonist energy that um, pulling back and not making a decision right away might have been a really good call. Um, but I think as well that there's something to be said for celebrating the fact that um, there were a lot of ways you could have seen different situations, specifically because the world is here, right? Um, so let me do this. Let me pull this up here. Spira, what messages do you have for my daily creatives? I'm going to get to the rest of this, but there's I'm being pulled to fill this out because it's like I'm getting half pictures here and it's not making sense. So I really want to get the rest of this energy. Knight of Pentacles is the challenge. The Emperor is the overcoming. Justice and the Empress. Beautiful. Okay, that makes way more sense. Um... Mm -hmm. the seven of cups is now coming across as like feeling this like pressure it's like this pressure like why why would this many you know things to choose from become overwhelming and it's like it would become overwhelming because the pressure makes you question yourself the pressure makes you it takes you outside of yourself and the antagonist energy is this king of swords so it's like kind of isolating yourself like gotta go make the decision gotta go figure this out when realistically it's it's something that requires a different approach uh, a different approach which is more you know the challenge here is this is the approach the challenge is understanding what sort of processual approach you want to take to something what is the process that you want to get from point a to point b to point z you know in this ten of pentacles um how do you want that to look right and and this is also a, 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 a card of planting seeds so i think it's like it's you're kind of In some ways, this is coming across as being, you know, prizing analysis and being stuck in that analysis, as opposed to kind of coming down from the mountain, right, like out of that analysis place, uh, and into a, a place that's prepared to start to plant seeds for something. Uh, slow approach. Yes. But it's like, again, it's still a planting card. Right. It's a planting card. And I think the reason why the emperor is here as part of this overcoming the challenge. 
is because you're waking up to something that's going to require a lot of energy in terms of knowing what you want and going for it fearlessly, right? And and this is also you taking the lead on what you want, you taking the lead on what's important to you. And you kind of have to be in that energy in some capacity to be in the Ten of Pentacles or to be drawing that into readings and things like that um, or for it to resonate and be relevant, The justice card is something that you're waking up to. And I almost feel like this is a way that you're recognizing the ways that you were kind of not inside, I want to say inside integrity within yourself, but I think it's also um, a way that you're starting to learn to do right by yourself, right? And this is connected to taking the lead on things that are really important to you, right? What does that leadership mean? The word is so overused because it's like we think about leadership while well, we think about it in terms of companies and positions that have more responsibility, um, but leadership can also mean, like I've met, you know, when I, wherever I work, I love getting to know all of the staff, not just the ones that are in positions like mine, but like janitors, uh, you know, other staff when they run events and I don't see them that often. It's like, and that's not to be like, I'm great. No, it's not like that. It's it, There's a book that, that really taught me the value of that called Lead Without a Title uh, by Robin Sharma. And in that book, he talks about how, you know, sometimes janitors are more powerful in companies than directors or, you know, um, VPs, right? It's just, it's like, th that's just how it is. <laughs> and if you think about it, a lot of the time, there there are positions that if they disappeared tomorrow, you would really start to understand how valuable they were, even though they seem, you know, so unimportant, right? To most people who are like thinking in terms of status and all of that, like I'm thinking about the ways that this card can show up in the negative where it's like ego and, and all of that, right? So it's sort of like you're, I feel like you're beginning to understand what this concept of leadership means relative to your heart center and also what's most important to you in your life, right? You're beginning to, to it's that feeling of doing right by yourself, um, and, and then that translates into how you can give birth to that same thing in the world for other people, to other people, with other people. Um, and it's almost like it's a very giving card, but I feel like there's a lot of legacy energy and it, things that are bigger than you. Uh, I think there was some shakeup at some point when it comes to a two of cups. There could have been a disappointment in love or you could have been hoping for something. You could have been really hoping for something and it just didn't happen. And then, you know, it's like it made you question this 10. And this could be I feel like this is energy that is like it's in the past. That's where it's coming from. Um, but it's sort of been changing the way that you see the possibilities in the Ten of Pentacles. And that's stuff that we have to deal with on our own because we don't want to bring that to relationships or and, and even friendships and expect that just to be the price of admission for getting to know us because that's not really fair, right? So um, that's something that needs to be, you know, and, and I think it has been based on the fact that it goes from like the Page of Cups, the King of Cups, the world. It's like bam, bam, bam. It's just, it's like it tells the story, but it's again, like it's, a, it's reminds me of the Lion King in that scene where they walk across the log and Simba ages by like 20 years. <laughs> I'm like, how long is that log? But also it, it's, it's kind of reminds me of that. Like it's almost like coming of age. Um, and, and we can come of age well into our 60s, 70s, 80s, right? We can come of age in so many different places, stages of our lives. And I know this as a queer person who, who's now transitioned, um, you know, they say that, you know, a lot of queer folks, uh, or I should say two SLGBTQ plus folks, because uh, I know that not everyone identifies with queer, so that's okay. So two SLGBTQ plus uh, folks don't always get I didn't get the opportunity to date when I was in high school I went on my first date when I was 19 because I had come out at that time and it was like pff, oh my gosh it was great um but it was like it's almost like there's a, a delay on on getting to experience the best parts of yourself uh, because there's this holding back so it's like thinking about that where our coming of age doesn't have to be uh, there's no restrictions or confines in terms of when that's supposed to happen aside from the ones that you assign so it's it's kind of going easy on yourself in that way but I almost feel like this is like a coming of age where it's like it's it's like a a a split second realization about disappointment that happened. And at the same time, these, this, this call um, to adventure really is something to do with leaving a legacy behind. But I do believe, and the two of cups is almost showing up in an energy of relationship for some, yes, but it's showing up more so as 
wanting to give your heart and, and to, to something, you know, un, unabashedly, unashamedly, wholeheartedly, right? Like to just throw everything you have at something. And I feel like there's this sort of, there's an energy of sudden realization and change. And it, it feels kind of dramatic, um, not in a way that's like over dramatic or overthinking, but it just feels like it was deeply transformative with the tower here um, and unavoidable as well. And I think in a lot of ways, it's like situations where you may not have trusted yourself or um, thought much of outcomes. It's like now there's something more available to you. Like there's this, it's almost like this is storying a little bit of, you know, it's like when we're in the seven of cups, you have to ask yourself why, right? Sometimes it's not wanting to look stupid. Sometimes it's not wanting to be hurt again. Sometimes it's uncertainty. It's not trusting yourself. But again, if you go why, if you, if you drill down the why, you'll usually get to because I don't feel good enough because I don't feel like I have enough. And that's just stories like you, we, we have to stop telling at some point, right? We, we really just have to like nip that completely because what's the point of those stories? What, like, what is the actual point of those stories when they we know they don't serve us we know they don't serve us and yet we continue to turn to them as a source of of strength or protection um but i think there's something to do with the clarity that you've gained from these situations that helps and and the reason why i say all of this relative to leaving a legacy is it goes back to this energy of like now is the time to make that first move say yes to life pick up the phone make that decision and take that step to one step towards the gods or us expect a cascade of changes good news and opportunities to show up as if by magic and it's like that one step that you take but this is kind of storing the clearing of that the refusal this is like storing the refusal because there's beautiful legacy energy here you do overcome it and this is like that's that's the the best card to get in terms of taking that one step forward because the emperor knows their stuff they know what not just direction they need to take but they also know what how they need to work with their energy to to realize a dream to realize projects to realize things right so don't be afraid of of um don't be afraid of doing right by yourself because i i think um there's a, a there's a depth to that there's a there's something really important here because i feel like this is almost like this sort of fearless recognition of truth i think of the justice card in terms of cause and effect yes ace of swords cause two of swords effect and when it comes to this energy i feel a bit like the the ace of swords here is really important and that that feeling of what's most true for you what is your truth and how does that how do you allow that to be part of what you do, right? And your truth, I think I think about the Ace of Swords. I mean, the Ace of Swords isn't here, but I feel like that's what the Justice card is wielding, right? So it's like this, I think that's so deeply connected to this Emperor energy because the Emperor cannot act in the absence of an understanding of that Ace in particular, right? The Emperor cannot act in the absence of the Aces. So I feel like that there's an Ace embedded in this Justice card. Um, I, I feel a lot like there's like this... I mean, it's also legalities too, right? So it could be, um, it could be negotiations in terms of legal contracts that you're signing for projects or work. And you're not really like you're, you're understanding your value and your worth because you know, not just how to take action and on what to take action, but you have this really beautiful way of, of bringing these things into the world and knowing just how to assemble all of the moving parts in a way that not just nurtures the project, but people at the same time. So Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for September 14th, please? Daily creatives for September 14th. Ten of Wands, letting it go. That's This has been showing up a lot, and I feel like the world is kind of like saying that there's this cycle that's ending. It, it's ended. I feel like it's ended, but it's just sort of like, it's almost like reflecting back to say like remember that you ended that like remember that that's that that's a, a cycle that's ended spirit what message do you have for my daily creatives please for september 14th september 14th eight 
Eight of Wands. Yeah, that's kind of, it, it's sort of reiterating this fast energy of the Page of Cups, the King of Cups in the world. It's like, whoosh, right? Like this super fast energy where things are coming together um, quite quickly. And interestingly, the challenge was this <laughs> slow process of, of planting seeds now, right? So it's like the, the getting to this point maybe came pretty quickly, right? Like it's like a sharp learning curve or baptism by fire, so to speak. Um, I mean, the emperor is here so that's possible two five two five which is on the time um but that eight of wands is like quick 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 moving energy um uh, spirit what messages do you have for my daily creatives please for september 14th september 14th death interesting that's a lot of pluto pluto energy uh because we have so pluto just in the tower and then the death card it's nothing to really be fearful of um the death card is one of my favorites in the deck um just because of how much you know we think of it in terms of the loss that comes with it but i think about all of the things that we can build from that place right and i just think about the smell of the woods in fall i've said this before but still um so we have the five of cups the two of cups the tower the temperance card and death I think right now you need to be very patient with yourself because there's a lot that's shifting and changing and you're you're doing the best that you can with it. Um, and this isn't to speak from, a, you know, a deficit place uh, of your energy, but instead to say, remember to look at all of the things that you're doing and to to remember that you're transforming and changing, right? That's no easy thing. Um, most people don't. Most people don't. Because it's tough, it's hard, it's it's too difficult, right? So we have the Ten of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? Seven of Cups, Five of Pentacles. Yeah, this is where it's like you might feel like you like like you missed opportunities. You might feel like that, but honestly, I feel like what you're missing out on is not what you think. Um and I think that when we we when we're in a place of missed opportunities or we're in a place of feeling fear like that, it's not about um you know, if you're trained to and trained just meaning if you've had traumas that make you feel like um, if you don't do this thing perfectly, you're not going to get things, right? Um, you know, if food was ever withheld from you or um, if you, you know, if you, there was like neglect that took place, those energies, that, that feeling, FOMO takes on a different character when you have, when, when that's the way that trauma has shown up in your life. Um, because it's not about, you know, uh, just the general missing out on opportunities that might be really good for you or, you know, it's it's that, when people say, you know, oh, it's a missed opportunity, it takes on a different character because it hits on that trigger of something more fundamental to your existence. Um, so just as an aside, um, that's something to, to be mindful of, you know, not just within yourself, but compassionate for in other people. And I think this seven of cups and the five of pentacles is, I think it's largely an energy of when you finally see, there's something that you're seeing here. Let me pull another card. Ace of Wands and the Temperance. So Temperance showed up twice. I just feel like when you're led by fear, you can't recognize your Ten of Pentacles. So you have to come out of that at some point, right? You have to allow yourself to know the joy of, of freedom from that. You have to know the joy of that. Uh, and I think that you have to let yourself feel that. You have to let yourself feel the fear first and then integrate it into where you are now and move past it. You have to be willing to move beyond it. Um, and I think this Ace of Wands and Temperance card, the the truth of what there's like there's something new that's here um 
it's almost coming across as ideas of balance, right? The Ace of Wands is new, but it's like this idea, right? This creative, this generative capacity of, of what balance means. And it's like you're understanding it slightly differently and it's coming across and through this Empress energy, right? The main lesson of this reading. So I feel like there's something about the new being um, really crucial. Um, crucial in the sense that like, it's not like it's something that you can miss, right? Because again, when, you know, I, I speak from experience that, you know, <clears throat> when we talk about missed opportunities and FOMO and all of that stuff, but it missed opportunities in particular, it hits like a trigger sometimes because it's just like, um, and it's not, I don't think it's something that will, like I can hope that it will, you know, leave completely one day. Um, but what I know to be true of that is that sometimes we can feel like that's a personal failing when we can feel like we didn't, we lacked something within us that made that not come to fruition. So then we struggle to know exactly what to do perfectly the next time, the right thing, you know, all of these things we need to know specifics. And then we get bound up in our fear and then we don't act. We don't act. We don't do anything because what we did not do we didn't know enough or we didn't have enough information or we couldn't figure out the details and so we get caught in this place where we try to pay attention but we're bringing this story of fear with us so even when a, a, another ten of pentacles shows up on your doorstep or around it's really hard to recognize it for what it is because all that you see is all that you're bringing to the table from before and that's where this need to focus on the new and balance your energy before the new like balance your energy in a way that allows you to see the new as something that's um, a passionate spark and remembering that there's a difference between passion and excitement right they're very much the same uh, sorry passion and excitement and fear they're very much same sides of the same they're, they're two sides of the same coin right so to clarify the king of swords, we have the wheel, we have the seven of pentacles and the eight of cups. And that's where I think it's like this impatience. And it's almost like, it's like walking away from broken dreams. That's what I've never interpreted the card that way, but it's like walking away from broken dreams. Um, you know, and that's where this sort of, it's like, this is where the king of swords can kind of get stubborn, right? And stubbornness just in the sense of, you know, there's hard one wisdom. There's hard one wisdom there. Three, two, three, two on the time. And sometimes it might feel like it's easier to just say, fuck this and to walk away uh, from the broken dreams and even just the potential of this, right? Because when you feel good on your own or you're building something for yourself and you're working, you know, kind of in quiet, what that can do to your energy is it can mean that you're doing something for yourself. You're becoming your own empress instead of looking outside of you. And that can really get your energy tied up because you can become impatient with the external with with um, and you can feel like it's like you against the world in a way, even though that sounds really weird. What I'm trying to say is your effort counts for more than, than spirits. So it's like you it's like misplaced trust, right? You put so much trust and faith in and it's good to do that, to put that much trust and faith in the work that you do and that you're doing. But when it comes down to it, there's this expansive energy that just doesn't get the chance to really flourish. It doesn't flourish, um, nor does it grow, really, because uh, 3333 three, three, three on the time. Um, because it's sort of in this place of constantly trying to, like, get ahead of, of the loss. This is very strong energy, but I feel like this is like ending a cycle of that um, – it's like ending a cycle and the wheel is here to say like it's like moving past that right moving past it and well beyond it um but that's where it's sort of it's sort of storying how you've allowed abundance to find you and meet you on the path ten of pentacles isn't that scary right we might think it is it might come across as such But only when you've been taught in some capacity to not trust in legacy building, to not trust in investing that heavily in things, right? Um, so I think ultimately, I think that there's a lot of forward movement here. Um, I just, I relate to a lot of this it, just because I've had to really... Um, recalibrate a lot of receptivity and you know having gone through some intense stuff when I was younger um, 
it's so easy to feel like you you how could you possibly live up to the ten of pentacles but you don't live up to the ten of pentacles you build up to the ten of pentacles and that's the fundamental difference and we're going to be at different places of abundance our entire lives and some things instead of looking at things and saying oh why am i not enough for that ask yourself why do i believe that i need to be enough for that instead of asking whether that fits me right it's, it's like that's the empress questions those are empress questions um yeah but it's like don't let those things stop you from taking action people are gonna have so many opinions regardless you've got to step into your power because i feel like this is it's like now now's the time the overcoming is the emperor right the lessons that you're learning are the empress this is technically counterpart energy but if it's unifying inside of you even better because that means you're that's that whole and complete right you're whole and complete just as you are showing up today which means that you are so many different major arcanas in one really <laughs> like i think about you know the magician but then i think about the hermit and then i also think about the emperor and the empress in one and then i think about the high priestess and hierophant like there are all of these beautiful energies that come together within you right Mm -hmm. I feel, though, that this isn't something to fear. This is the transformation of that. <laughs> but I, I, I giggle a little bit, though, because it's just like whatever this cycle was, it's just like bam, bam, bam. Like you're just like through it. You're just <laughs> rocketing right through it. There's like you're done. <laughs> you're like, oh, uh, OK, I see what I need to do. Got it. Got it. Got it. Good. 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 Great. Golden. Fantastic. Uh, let's feel the thing. Let's, you know, see the, the two of cups. Let's transform the thing and come back into balance. Right. And it's like, it's this sort of fearlessness that takes over at some point in the spread and in your energy spirit. What messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? For September 14th messages for September 14th, please. I express my gratitude. But also let's look at this one too. I am willing to forgive. So I, I'm gonna, so I think that they're so tied together, right? Um, I am willing to forgive. And I think it was Wayne Dyer that said this uh, and he quoted someone else, but forgiveness is the fragrance of the violet on the heel that just crushed it. I think something along those lines. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet leaves on the heel of the one who just crushed it. And it's, but anyway, so I'm willing to forgive. Forgiveness is a gift to yourself. It allows you to release the past. It allows you to release the past. Go to your mirror and say, I forgive myself. I forgive everyone. I forgive the past. And just willing, right? You don't have to be like, I'm forgiving you. If you don't feel it, you don't feel it. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you can't, right? Like I get it. I've been through situations where abuse was a, a very real thing, right? Like, was nearly murdered in 2007 forgiveness isn't something you need you need to to run to or feel like you have to give that away right i've been in situations where people have taken advantage in ways that are very harmful and abusive so it's like you don't rush to forgiveness just be willing right be willing to forgive and that's really what that i'm willing to forgive okay so i just wanted to put that as an aside because it's really about compassion for yourself and where you are um i express my gratitude Make gratitude your spiritual practice today. Start with, good morning, bed. Thank you for being so comfortable. I love you. <laughs> I know I do that some mornings. I just lay there with my hands under my pillow. I'm like, oh, so good. I love my bed. I love the morning. I love the crickets in the morning. So good. Anyways, good morning, bed. Thank you for being so comfortable. I love you. The more you express gratitude, the more you will find to be grateful for. Um, and I feel like that's, that's really the essence of this here is like, what is it that this most recent cycle taught you? What is it that that taught you? And what is it that you're taking? What is the wisdom that you gained, right? Don't see the situation through, well, I was in a seven of cups and I just didn't know. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get caught in that place, right? Think to yourself, okay, now what? Now what? Right? That's where you integrate that ace of swords into something that is not just loving of self and nurturing and caring of self, but what you're being awakened to is this sense of what justice might actually mean for you and how you do right by yourself therein. Okay, so with love, 
Dearest you, did you know that when you stop fighting and accept everything exactly as it is right now, miracles start to happen? There's a freedom in this kind of radical acceptance. Let go of unrealistic expectations and see things as they really are, not how you'd like them to be. You'll be surprised at how everything seems to fall into place. And I'm going to read that line again, holding this. I know the reading is so long already, but um, let go of unrealistic expectations and see things as they really are, not how you'd like them to be. You'll be surprised at how everything seems to fall into place. Okay. When you refuse to accept things, ooh, flicker. When you refuse to accept things, life gets messy, you act messy, and your world stays in chaos, tension, and disarray. But don't try to force a change or manipulate circumstances. Instead, learn about what's in front of you and face it with your eyes fully open. Then you can decide, stay or go, sink or swim, move or stay still. Acceptance, oh no. Okay, so, um, <laughs> really funny story about setting intentions. <laughs> um, I was thinking the other day that I wanted to, uh, you know, my, my cat has, it's the kind of change in season where she has like a, a good undercoat. Um, so I have to brush her regularly because it's just like the nice thing to do. I don't want her to have hairballs. Right. So, uh, unfortunately she's had one and I could, f I could hear it. <laughs> and I, today was thinking I need to wash my sheets. I need to wash my sheets. I need to clean that up, right? I need to, I want fresh sheets on my day off. Yeah. So you can imagine what just happened. Uh, it's all clean and everything's fine, but it was just like, oh no, <laughs> I didn't ask in the right order. <laughs> right. And I'm just saying it's sometimes spirits funny like that. <laughs> just be like, just a reminder. Um, it's not being about, it's not about being careful what you wish for. It's about, are you tending to your vibration sufficient that that's the case, right? Because now I was like, well, maybe I won't, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so <laughs> when you refuse to accept things, life gets messy, you act messy, and your world stays in chaos, tension, and disarray. But don't try to force a change or manipulate circumstances. Instead, learn about what is in front of you and face it with your eyes fully open. Then you can decide, stay or go, sink or swim, move or stay still. Acceptance is the key to freedom and opens the door to the real opportunities waiting to be discovered. Set yourself and others free. And that's it though, right? The real opportunities waiting to be discovered. So... This was your reading, my darlings. Uh, again, sorry about the interruption. She's okay. She's, I can hear her. She has zoomies now, so she feels much freer, which is good because, um, yeah. But anyways, so on that note, I hope that wherever, well, I hope that if, so if this resonated, please give it a like or subscribe. I'm discombobulated because of the interruption. Oh my gosh, I was in a flow, but... Um, if this resonated, please give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you're not already, but if you are part of my subscriber base, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. So thank you for that. And as always, wherever this finds you on the time space, continue a morning, afternoon, or night. I hope it finds you very, very well, my friends. Take care.